Hi, this is Jim Malcolm with Humanized Technologies, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the new version of Views VR Studio software. Uh, this will be a new version. If you are already a Views camera owner, it is a free download. Uh, if you're new to the Views camera, you will get five software licenses with the purchase of the camera itself. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice in this latest version of software is that we no longer have a trim tool. Um, for those of you who are familiar with the software, we used to have a little pair of scissors up here which were our trim tool. Uh, we've gone ahead and simplified the interface a little bit to eliminate one of the screens that you have to get into by simply adding your trim down here at the bottom. So I can hit my bracket to put an in endpoint or I can go to the other end and I can put in my out point uh, as well. So this really helps to uh, kind of eliminate one of the screens. The other thing that I can do is simply hit I or O. In this case, I'm going to hit O on the keyboard and it adds my out mark. So shortcuts I and O or you can use the brackets. Uh, I'm not going to get into too much detail on some of the other features. Flip 180 degrees remains. Again, this is a feature that you're going to use if you are inverting your video. Say, for example, you had your camera flying underneath a drone. Um, choose center. I'm going to just sure up the center here a little bit and make sure that I am pretty much in the center. I want this rear video wall back here to be in the center. Um, this feature here, which is your cut field of view, uh, again, not going to get into it too much today, but it still remains. If I wanted to output 180 degree video, I could certainly do so that way. Um, the next big change you're going to see is in your patch image. The addition of a top image in addition to what we had at the bottom so that you can put multiple logos into, um, uh, into a video or you could say for example fill in a sky or, or add other components. So a lot of people asked for this. We went ahead and put it in. Uh, I will tell you that the monopod that I'm using at this shoot uh, can be covered with about 6%. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just bring that down to 6% and cover up my monopod and eliminate. The biggest changes you're going to see is when you get into your advanced tools, the first piece of it here being your refined stitching. So I'm going to go to my in mark and I'm going to add a current frame. Now when I add the frame, you saw how the video jumped and the software did its best job of trying to kind of align those stitch marks. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove that current frame and I'm going to put it back in again and you can see how that video jumps. Now. When I start to get a critical eye, I can tell that it's not perfectly aligned. So I'm looking down here at the bottom along this edge of the elevator, and unfortunately I see a bit of a stitch line there still. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply grab this slider here at the, that's labeled bottom, and I'm going to adjust it in a way that I can try to align that a little bit better. And it seems like that that little bit of a correction I just did is enough to fix that mark. Uh, I am now hitting my left and right arrow keys to kind of fine tune it in there. And I think at 1.51 meters from the camera, I can pretty much eliminate that stitch line. Now, in camera number two, I have another series of stitch uh, errors here that did not get 100% out during uh, the auto calibration. So in this case, I'm going to go to camera number two. It's saying that that wall is about 1.25 meters away. Uh, I'm going to back this off a little bit because it may have lost its mind uh, simply because of the way that wall is. Uh, uh, it's really a video screen and it's kind of seeing through that. And that seems to kind of uh, eliminate it. So it looks like if I go right to one meter away, I've now shored up these lines and eliminated the stitch error in camera number one. Excuse me, camera number two. Now if we go to camera uh, stitch line number three, I got a similar error here. Now I'm going to just go to the stitch line number three. I'm going to work on correcting that. Um, that looks like it does a pretty good job right down to 0.71 meters away. And eh, maybe we off a little bit. So we go 0.76. Yep, 0.76 looks like it eliminates all of that stitch error entirely. Uh, I can do the same for four. I can see a little bit of a, a piece up here. So I'm going to go to camera number four. I'm going to bring this down a little bit, mm, a little bit too far. So now I can see 
much more of this stitch line that's in here. So I'm just going to work on clicking my arrow to the to the uh, right and we'll bring that number up. There we go. It looks like 0.84 meters away eliminates that stitch line entirely. I'm going to look over on this side. Stitch line number one actually did a pretty good job of lining this one up. It goes right down the corner of this elevator. So I don't see any stitch errors on that side at all. All right. So from a stitch perspective, now within just a couple minutes, I have gone through and fine-tuned all of my stitch lines in this video, and I'm ready to move on. A couple other features that you're going to see in here, um, we've modified our blending levels a little bit. Um, you can eliminate it and go to none, low, medium, and high. This is basically an opacity change where we really look at ov the overlap of the video and blend the different frames together. Uh, in this particular case, it appears that a low level blending is plenty for what I need to do on this, so I'm going to leave it at that. Color matching you'll also is a new uh, tab and you'll see some changes in there. Um, if I choose none, then each camera is working independently. I can then tell the cameras to look at the nearest neighbor or the nearer, nearest neighbor lenses. Uh, to try to color match across the two. That's extremely helpful when I have things like um, mix lighting where I have daylight and tungsten. Or I can have the, the system average out the entire sphere based on a current frame and uh, balance it out uh, globally. In this case, I'm going to go by nearest neighbor. And then I'm going to go to our last new window in here, which I think is going to excite a lot of people, which brings us into some advanced adjustments. So the first thing you're going to see is the ability to increase or decrease your global exposures. Again, something that was asked for and something that we were able to deliver. Uh, in this case, I think my overall exposure is pretty good. So I'm going to leave it. Uh, I'll bring it up just a little bit. Why not? Let's bring it up about uh, three points. That might be a little much, but I think when you see this video play here in a second, uh, you'll see why I'm bringing that up just a little bit. Uh, the other piece is our color temperature and our saturation. Now, there is a lot going on up here uh, with this tungsten lighting. It's very yellow that's up here. But the video screen that's inside this elevator is um, it's balanced with daylight lighting. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually just increase this color temperature a little bit because I like to make hyper-realistic, um, almost fake color. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that here. And then I'm also gonna increase the saturation. And once the elevator here starts to move, you'll see why I've done this. Again, this is a stylistic uh, piece for me. I like oversaturated video. Um, it's just a way that I like th things to come together. Um, so nonetheless, I've gone ahead and pulled this out. And I think overall, to me, this looks good. Uh, put your comments down in the below if you, if you would approach it differently. And you know what? We can try to render it in a bunch of different ways to see what, uh, to see what works. All right. All that being said, we are now ready to output this video. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and push the render tab here. Um, basically looks the same at this level. However, if you do go into your advanced options, you're going to see a few changes. Um, for me, I like to go ahead and output it maximum bit depth, which is 120 megabits per second. Now, this is particularly important in this video because it's a relatively dark elevator in there, and I wanted to make sure that our shadows uh, don't have too much noise going on. Them. So I got it at 120 megabits per second. Um, I'm going to leave it at st uh, standard stitching method. Uh, there's not a lot of moving subjects other than that what's happening on that video screen, so I'm, uh, adaptive isn't going to help me. I'm going to go ahead and choose spatial audio for this, which is going to allow me to create four separate audio tracks. And then uh, you'll also notice that we've added cube mapping, which allows us to output into Facebook's new cube map format, which ultimately, quite frankly, will give you a little bit better resolution. Um, more to come on that. In fact, I think cube map warrants its own video. Um, since this video was shot at uh, One World Observatory in New York City, I'm going to go ahead and just title this as One World. And I'm going to go ahead and render it out. So once you hit render, again, the system takes about one minute to render one minute of video. Uh, you can go into the render tab and this is where your renders will show up when, uh, when it's done rendering. 
All right, so that's it for now. This is Jim Malcolm with Humanized Technologies. I'm gonna go ahead and post this video that I created along with this tutorial. So you can put on a headset and take a look at this elevator ride coming out of the One World Observatory. It is absolutely amazing and a ton of fun. Uh, leave your comments down at the bottom. I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, again, thanks for being a Views user, and I look forward to seeing more of your work.